Hello everyone, welcome to Growing Faith and today we are having story time. Okay, in today's story I'm going to be talking about a couple that have been dating for a few years and at some point they had a fight like most couples do and they're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Apparently the woman was unfaithful I think. I don't know how she was unfaithful but she was. So anyway, she decided that, you know what, I'm not doing this no more. I have go my papa house. I am done with you. So she packed her things and she left. I went to her father's house. And then the guy was living, you know, without her for about one, two, three. By the fourth month, he decided, I want my woman back. So he got to done. He's got uh, help or a slave. And then they went together to go and find his woman concubine wife to be i don't know what she was but they were in a relationship so he traveled and went down to her father's house and met his soon to be father-in-law but for the purpose of the story i'll just call her his father-in-law and you know he spent one two three days with them it was fun they were eating they had reconciled at some point and he was going to take his girlfriend back with him and then by the fourth day, he's like, okay, it's time to go. Father-in-law, I'm ready. We're leaving. You know, got everything ready, packed and everything. So father-in-law was like, oh, why don't you guys just have lunch and, you know, let's, you know, chat a bit. Let's have a drink and then you can be on your way. So he said, whatever. So they ate. They had lunch. It was fun. They were talking and drinking. And the time kind of flew by. By by the time they realized it was like evening and it was a bit late for them to go. So the father was like, oh, it's quite late. Why don't you just wait till tomorrow? Which was the fifth day. So on the fifth day, again, the father-in-law said, um, why don't you just like, let's chill a bit, have a drink, have lunch again, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, he's like, okay, again. At this point, when I'm reading the story, I'm like, okay. father-in-law is probably missing his daughter and just wants his daughter around because... I don't understand what that was about. So anyway, they ate again and drank and everything. And then the father was like, oh, it's late again. And Dude was like, mm, 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 mm. we are leaving today. So they decided to leave, even though it was a bit later in the day. And they traveled together, him, his fiance, and the um, staff or help or whatever. And they started to travel. So it got a bit late. They got to a village and the servant was like, oh, okay, why don't we just um, stop here and spend the night and then tomorrow when it's daytime, we can continue on our, on our journey. And the guy was like, hey, hey, I'm not staying here. Like, I'm not used to these people. I don't know who these people are. They're like strangers to us. Let's try and get closer to our hometown and then we can spend the night. So that is what they did. So they did, you know, work for a while and then got to a village that was more familiar to them. Then when they got to the village, they went straight to the village square. The village square is really like the center of the village where people like gather, where activities are done and fun stuff goes on. So they were at the village square and it was late at night, so there was really nobody around. They laid their mats and beds and stuff like that and we were ready to sleep right there out in the open. Can you believe it? And nobody was like, oh, would you like to come in and spend the night? Anyway, so an old man was coming from work at this time and then he saw them like ah why are you guys just sitting down here and in the open and nobody nobody gave you you know somewhere to stay you can't just stay out here in the open they were like oh no we're good we're fine so he said okay if you don't mind you, you can if you want to come home with me and spend the night in my home i mean but if you don't want that whatever you do i wouldn't advise you to stay here spend the night just outside in the open so they were like okay it seems nice enough so they went with him and so when they got to his house, he made dinner, they were eating and talking and getting to know each other. And, you know, it was starting to get like an interesting and fun evening at this point. So the next thing they heard was people banging on the door. The house had been surrounded by men from the village banging and saying, open the door, open the door, open the door. It was so horrible and so like they were almost going to break the door down so the old man who is the owner of the house said ah please you guys should calm down what's the problem what's the problem and they said if you have a stranger in your house bring that man out for us to grip him so 
the old man was like no you can't do this this is a stranger he's this is his first time in our village you actually cannot do this this is crazy like please please and then something really really crazy happened the old man said i have a daughter who is a virgin and this man has a fiance take them and leave the man that's like mind-blowing right like i could not believe like seriously well so while this debate was going on, was trying to talk them into taking his daughter and the man's fiance the man who is a stranger in his home just pushed his fiance out the door and locked the door can you believe it like this is <sighs> anyway so of course they took turns graping her all night and in the morning she was able to eventually get away she stumbled back to the house and just when she got to the house right there in front of the door she collapsed so at this time the man the stranger is getting ready to leave and start going home so he opens the door and sees her there on the floor and goes to hands like oh honey be okay you okay and then realizes that she was dead so he packed her up put her on his donkey and eventually and continued the rest of the journey so when he got home he took a knife spread her on the table and cut her into 12 pieces after she had been mutilated in life he went ahead to do it again in death like cut her into pieces and sent the different 12 parts to the 12 villages and the 12 tribes and <laughs> in his anger he, he, he he sent her to the 12 tribes and yeah that was that that's a horrible story i know it's 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 so so horrible but believe it or not that's a story that actually happened if you haven't read it it's from judges 19 the whole of judges 19 from the beginning to the end that's absolutely crazy and if that story sounds familiar, like, like, oh, I've seen that happen in the Bible before. Yes, it has happened in the Bible before. In Genesis 19, where Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah was going to get destroyed. Remember when the angels got there, they told them, and they went into Lot's house. And then the, people, the men came around again and was like, so this is, this is like a thing that was happening at the time. I think the whole homosexual thing was, was a thing. So anyway, the men came again and were like, let this let these men out this these were angels by the way bring them out and let us you know do with them as we want as we please and lord said no i have two daughters who are virgins take them instead like really so that's genesis 19 if you want to look it up you can read the story again and this is judges 19 i just told you about and when you read the two stories every woman is going to ask the question are women valuable in the Bible? Are we valuable to God? Are we, are we acknowledged or recognized or are just like basically things in, for men, really? To answer that question, I just want to encourage you to read Judges 20. So like I said, the story I just told you was from Judges 90, but if you want to see the answer to the, to the whole everything that happened so basically if you want the part two of what happened in judges 19 i'm not going to tell you that in this channel we are encouraging you to dig deep into the world so i'm encouraging you to go ahead and read judges 20 so you know what happened what the consequences for the evil that was done to that woman was was at the end of the day so to answer our question about what the bible really thinks about women I want to remind us that the Bible is descriptive as well as prescriptive. So what I mean is, there are things that were recorded in the Bible because those things happened, not because God is saying these things are okay. Do you understand? So there are things that are described because they happened. Because the Bible is also a historical book, right? And then there are things that are prescribed because that's what God wants us to do. So I'll give you an example. So who was a man after God's heart was a king at the time and he was so so loved by God 
at some point killed somebody's husband and married the wife now that was written in the bible but that's not prescribed for christians to do that's not prescribed for anybody to do to kill somebody's husband and marry the wife that was a bad thing but it did happen so just because it's in the bible doesn't mean this is a okay thing this is okay with god or this is expected by god no so when we read the bible i want to encourage us to be able to tell the difference between what is being described and what is being prescribed i hope i'm making sense so anyway i hope you enjoyed that story i love reading it when i read it i could not wait to tell somebody else so share this video to somebody that you think would find that story very interesting and if you have enjoyed it don't forget to like and subscribe if you like content like this put on post notifications so you know whenever i upload another video bye